Today's episode is brought to you by Open Fit. We're going to get yourself fit for this summertime sadness. No, that's not right. <laughs> that's the only summer, <laughs> summer, uh, hot time, summer in the city. You're going to get fit and you're going to look pretty. Bam, 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 bam. We'll oh. talk about that. And 23andMe, Father's Day is just around the corner and it could be a great gift to get for your father to find out, I assume, if he is your father. We'll find out. Let's start this podcast. Hello, everybody. It's time for Ghost and Friend Dog. Ghost and Friend Dog in the morning. In the morning. Broadcasting live, 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 live. In four hour recording studio audience. Recording. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Cox and Crendor in the morning. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Cox and Crendor in the morning. Wait, this is 200. This is the big two double O. Oh, shit. The big two double O. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I mean... It's cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, we finally made it. I've lost my voice. I'm, I'm a mess, but we're here. We're here, y'all. We're here. What happened to your voice? Well, I was screaming uh, at a lot of people, and I lost it. Well, that'll do it if, uh, yeah. if I'd take a wild guess. Yeah, it wasn't anything complicated. I was just, you know, out, and it's loud at night. And so I had to yeah. talk over, you know, crappy, like, oomch, 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 oomch. And so I had to talk uh, over that, and I was just, you know, I lost my voice. Classic, dude. I know, classic. I know that feel. I'm always out yeah. and about yelling, oh, yeah. screaming, losing my voice. Uh, <laughs> I've been sick. Uh, but me I'm too. Much we over barely, now. we barely made it through to this 200. We somehow made it to 200 <laughs> episodes. We yeah, could have been dead for all it. we know. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. But all I know is. I got over. It was one of those things where, like, you feel it, you feel a sickness coming on. You're like, oh boy, and then uh, you get over it uh, in about a week. And really, the worst part was the cough. Like out of everything, it's like when you feel achy, you're just kind of like, eh, just take an Advil, get rid of muscle aches, and then it gets kind of nose runny, and you're like, eh, I guess I'll blow my nose a little bit. But then the cough kicks in. It's just nonstop, like. <coughs> <coughs> And you can try to like stream, you try to record videos, you can't stop coughing. It's it's annoying. Yeah, that's kind of the worst part when our job is this is when you get that sort of after funk cough when you know you're like better. I'm not gonna say cured, better, and you still can't do anything because you're like, hey, <coughs> it's me, Credor. <laughs> <laughs> you know the usual. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, that's, that's what I did. Uh, I mean, aside from that, pretty uh, pretty dull week. Watched some Studio Ghibli movies. That was fun. Uh, I've been catching up on... Uh, I've been watching since episode one of The Office. Oh, The Office. I never watched all The Office. and So, I would catch an episode every now and again. But I never really watched it. So, I instead... Uh, went and on Netflix have been watching from the beginning. Wow, we. Yeah, I can't tell if I love it or hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of. I always liked The Office. Well, I like the first few seasons, and then it starts like. That's like a lot of shows. It's. I mean, there's a lot of funny bits every now and again, but a lot of time I'm like, everyone at this office is annoying. Why do they continue to work here? I would not want to work here. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like, but we're a family, and so all the wacky hijinks. I'm like, how do you get any work done? <laughs> None of this. Yeah, I would be one of the villains on The Office. One of the people who comes in and is just like, you're all terrible. Do your work. And they're like, we got to get rid of this guy. And I'm like, we're running a company here. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'd be an Office villain. <laughs> um, but I think... Uh... People are sending us quotes, weren't they? Are yes, they we have. We I have a bunch of quotes. Are, do you want to just jump into this? I have so many quotes. I mean, we might as well. We got nothing else. We just like <laughs> walked around yelling and being sick all week. Yeah, I mean, that's us. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last week we asked you to submit your 200th episode quotes. 
things we've said over the last many, many years. And we're going to, one, try to guess why we said them and try to guess who is the person who said them. All right. The first quote is from Calum Solaris. And the quote is, I will punch a mother of three in the face to get one of those. Who said uh, it and why? I feel like you said it <laughs> during uh, some sort of Black Friday thing. If Maybe. take a wild guess. That sounds incredibly accurate. I would punch a mother of three <laughs> in the face for something for Black Friday. That's a, I can confirm that. Yeah. I feel Those like deals that. are steals, and I will get them. Yeah, that's definitely a you Black Friday quote. It was like, I can picture it, too. I can picture you punching that mother of three just trying to pick up that Tickle Me Elmo, and you're just like, sit down. Push. Yeah. You get your Tickle Me Elmo, and you take it home, and you just put it on your... Your coffee table. Yeah, he's like, hee hee! <laughs> I don't know. Is that what, is that, is that what I can't does? really do an elbow voice <laughs> right now. My throat hurts so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, <laughs> Elbow! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, that was easy one. That was pretty easy. Easy one. Bring the next one in. All right, all right. SB Slowbro wrote this one. I can't put my boner here. I can't put my boner here either. Whoa! Here's where I can finally can put and hide my boner. I say this is a Crendor line. I would <coughs> never... The phrase, whoa, here is, here's where I can finally put and hide my boner. I don't think I've ever used the word whoa, and it's like, whoa! No, that's, that's, uh, that's a you quote, because I would never use the term boner. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I don't think Touché. I've ever said... I don't think I've ever said boner before. I don't know. You've just used it twice. Yeah, but that's in reference to the thing. Mm, okay. So that's why like would I say this? What am I? Um, I don't. This doesn't. The phrase, I can't put my boner here. I can't put my boner here either. Whoa. Here's where <laughs> I can finally put and hide my boner. I guess I probably did say that. But <laughs> what? in what way? Why? I don't know. I don't. I think the best part about these is I have no recollection of any of these. Like I don't, I don't even remember what we would talk about where this would come up. Not like either of us. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, but if somebody wants to like put their, like where they're actually from in the chat, so we don't have to look, that'd be great. Or the comment section, whatever, whatever you're listening on. <laughs> I can't put my boner here. I can't put my bo I feel like this is like I can't put my boner here. I can't put my boner here either. <laughs> Although I have no idea what we're talking about, but obviously I was very upset about boner receptacles at the time. So, yeah. all right. <laughs> the next one I feel like is a me as well. How come all these are me? The next I one's uh, dead people don't need fridges. Get it from grandma. That's definitely a Jesse <laughs> quote. I remember saying that. Yeah, that does sound like something. Yeah. I, think, I feel like I remember that, but I also don't. You know what I mean? It's one of those quotes where once you say it, it sticks with you forever. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, like a it, it barbecue for sauce for the soul. <laughs> it's in there. It's all sticky. <laughs> it's all up in your soul. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's probably going to be one we do for episode 300. <laughs> like barbecue <laughs> sauce for the soul. <laughs> uh, that was sent by Revan83 or Revan83. Revan. Revan. Revan83. Revan it up. The next one, Tangled Fan 2400. I see your dream and raise you a dream where I was watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, except they were all just licking each other's heads. <laughs> that's you. There's no way I had a dream where Ninja Turtles no, licking each other's heads. That's you. What do you mean? That's definitely you. In fact, I'm pretty sure I remember this one because I described my dreams and you were like, uh, I'm going to raise your dream. And then you talked about licking Ninja Turtle heads. I don't remember that dream at all. I'm pretty, Man. I'm like 95% sure. I don't, okay, sure. No, no, I, I remember all my crazy dreams. I never licked a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> well, these are saying Ninja Turtles like other Ninja Turtle heads. I never had Ninja Turtles in my dream. I would never <laughs> lick a turtle head. It just wouldn't happen. <laughs> wouldn't do it. I wouldn't lick a turtle head. <laughs> Not gonna do it. Yeah, that's a you. That's a definite you. Uh, what about this quote? So, Kamaki H sent a bunch of things in. 
Baja Blast Me. That's you. 100%. That does sound like something I would say. I think you it would, would be definitely me. say Baja, Baja Blast Me. <laughs> Baja Blast Me. It was probably me talking about Baja Blast. And I was like, just Baja Blast Me. Give me the Baja Blast. It's a great uh, Another drink. quote sent in was rub it down with olive oil. That's definitely when we were talking about the potato. Yeah, that's definitely potato. But I don't know who said it. Uh, it may have been you saying olive oil stuff. Then I was like, yeah, rub it down with olive oil. Yeah, but you just got to rub been, it down. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know which one. There is also everything I did was for science. Um, <laughs> I think that's you. Feels like something a villain would say. So, yes, that's probably me. Yeah, I don't do things for science. <laughs> you don't do things for anything, really. <laughs> That's true. Uh, uh, Kristen Grinwis sent this quote. Nobody knows why those parrots get high. <laughs> I don't know what that's from. <laughs> I, this, the quote is, nobody knows why those parrots get high. I don't remember. That has to be Wait, from a news that... story or something where we were just like. Yeah. Uh, maybe I asked you to explain what the article was and you're like nobody knows why those parents get high i don't know <laughs> or maybe i was mocking something that was said in an article but i feel like this is news related yeah i feel like it's got to be news related this is definitely something you said i i know okay. this is something you said uh g leg work wrote it's a lot nicer because there's changing seasons and that means all the homeless people get killed off in winter <laughs> oh yeah that was me because it's uh it's brought up in my stream all the time. Someone put it in the quote bot. All right. <laughs> Listen, this was like eight years ago. All right. Seven, six. I said a lot of shit that I'm like, why did I say that back then? It's, he's grown uh, like a presidential candidate. He's grown and changed. <laughs> I've grown. I've changed. I've had organs removed. I, I, get, I would love to know the context of that statement. Because that is in that is crazy. I don't even know why I said that. Like, looking back on that, I have no idea. Okay, there's, a, <laughs> there's another one I said in one of my vlogs where I was like, uh, people that drink are dumb or something like that. And then I watched it again while drinking my glass of wine. Like, that's you know what? You were just opinionated. Was. You were young and opinionated like most was, people on the internet. Yeah. I was young, opinionated in my early 20s. I had my whole life ahead of me. And yeah, now, now it's all downhill. <laughs> yeah, now we've been doing this thing by. so long. It's all <laughs> downhill. Yep. <laughs> I remember that one, too, because my parents were like, we heard the podcast, and you said that thing, and we helped feed the homeless people, so why'd you say that? And I'm like, I don't know. I was stupid. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, the next quote by Isaac's art page is, if there is a god and you are merciful... You will blow this gas station up and just kill us all. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely you. I can even picture that happening. I you just don't know what that's in reference to. <laughs> I definitely would say that. That is a thing I have said and know I have said. <laughs> don't know why. But obviously it was a bad day at the gas station. And I was like, blow it up. I don't even care. <laughs> I'm out. I don't even care anymore. Uh... I got one for you. Okay. Uh, with my chair, I shall take down Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> um, that has to be you. It is, in fact, a Crendor quote. Yeah, that's a Crendor quote. There's another where? one. Where? I don't know where. <laughs> I am no man. I am Stephen Hawking. That is also a Crendor quote. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you got it. 100% uh, Crendor. There's also the age of man is over. Uh, that sounds like also a Crendor quote. <laughs> <laughs> that is incorrect. That's a you quote. Well, the age of man has come to an end. That's true. <laughs> now the lizard people shall rise. <laughs> uh, those are uh, those are three more quotes I found. I think some of those are from Saints Thro Saints Row, though. I feel like I said uh, that in Saints Row. This is from X Love Cow XX. I loved the horse clip clop, and now he's in a jar of paste going drip drop. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that is you. I'm gonna say that's a crendor. I think that's I don't think I've ever used the phrase I love a horse named clip clop. <laughs> <laughs> that's a safe wager, I've never said that phrase. God damn. I don't I think I remember that. 
There's a part of my brain that has the clip clop <laughs> still like <laughs> hardwired in there. Hardwired in there, yeah. <laughs> you can't ever re- really get rid of clip clop. <laughs> uh, good old clip clop, man. Uh, when it happens, T1 wrote, Back in the Depression, we would have been happy with a vegetable tray. That could have been either one of us. Honestly, yeah. that's a 50-50 toss-up. That's a 50-50. That definitely feels like a rant where we were on something at the time. It's just <laughs> yeah. like, back in my day. <laughs> yeah, that would, that's going to yeah. be any of us. That's anybody. I have no idea. Kuaesa? Kuaesa? Kesa? Whatever. Kesa, Um Here's a quote. We got off to Velociraptors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say me, but I don't know why I would have said that. I would say you as well. I don't know if I'd ever talk about getting off to Velociraptors. Yeah. But I'm not worried about the fact that it says we. Like, I was in a big group of people. And we were like, yeah, that raptor's hot. Pants down, everybody. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, of course, we have from... Uh, Lazy Train 082, because it came out of my incredibly nice smelling vagina. <laughs> that one's obvious. That's that's yeah, that's, that's that's Mike that's Diamond. You. That's easy. That's a Mike Diamond to you. Yeah, that's Mike Diamond's poor mother. We're sorry, Mike <laughs> Diamond. Mr. Diamond, we're sorry. <laughs> I can't even do that quote justice. My throat is so bad. Um, <laughs> This is from Barney ML. My name's Mike Lowry, and I'm going to send you into space, Will Smith. And Will Smith is like, I've been to space before, and I killed aliens there, but I need my trusty donkey with me. And they get to space, and the radiation turns donkey to donkey from Shrek. <laughs> that is you. That is 2,000% something you would say. That is it the train of thought of someone say. only that you... It's you. It can't be... Yeah. I've never gone from point A to point F like that ever. <laughs> Yeah, I would uh Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I think that's a me quote. I can picture myself saying that. Fades two one wrote Are there just two Asian dudes banging everyone in Japan? I feel like that's a me for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. Usually if it's dirty, it's me. Um <laughs> This seems really obvious. Uh Jean Zhao wrote you might be a modern Aristotle. Shit, dude, I never thought of it that way. We really, like, got into it today. Now we're going to talk about wieners. That's an obvious... It's a conversation between you and I, obviously. Yeah, no doubt. No one... No one is... Uh. <laughs> no one's ever going to question who says shit, dude. That's a 100% you. That's... Yeah, that's a me. That's, that's a, a me. me. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's one I got for you from Lane, though. They say... Uh... I listened to an old episode of this, this fine program, and I feel like I've grown as a man and a human being, and you've gotten a lot more angry at life. Is that a quote of, that we've said or a review of this podcast? Someone said in episode 85. Oh, episode 80, 85. In episode 85, we got more bitter about life? Oh, my God. <laughs> Apparently. Wow. Episode well, 85. <laughs> that was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we... <laughs> well, uh, I would say probably me. It was a quote from me. What? Wait, what was the quote again? The quote was, I listened to an old episode of this, this fine program, and I feel like I've grown as a man and a human being, and you've gotten a lot more angry at life. Me? I'm the more <laughs> angry at life person? Apparently, at 85. I did say I would I would blow up a gas station and punch your mother three in the face. So maybe you're right. Maybe I'm the problem. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. Maybe. When you really think maybe. about it, you put the pieces <laughs> together. Yeah, yeah. I did I did when I did say that. Um, so you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh let's see. Uh let's see. Uh here's another one. Uh <laughs> uh, give the kids won't care give them some brandy and they'll forget um <laughs> definitely we're definitely we're talking about like 
<laughs> I don't, actually, I don't know what the hell we're talking about. I thought I knew. I don't have a clue. Um, I'm going to say because it seems harmful to people. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> yeah, probably say so. It doesn't say. I, mean, I, I think because I, because like the tone of it seems very <laughs> flippant with human yeah. life. So I feel like I probably said it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's also, you went Spanish on us again, man. I think that's probably you to me <laughs> yeah, when I said is. something really weird and just like <laughs> probably stumbled over my words. I don't yeah. know. Uh, there's also welcome to the grammar cast. My name is Horatio Bottomlip and this is my colleague Graham Cracker. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't remember that. Did we all. have a special guest? <laughs> have we ever had a guest? <laughs> that doesn't sound like anything either <laughs> of us would say. Yeah, it sounds like we took an episode off. Yeah, did we hire the uh, writers from Family Guy to come and do a show? Because that doesn't sound like us at all. It doesn't. I don't. I don't. That know. guy's just listening to that. my brother, my brother, and me, and like got it confused. <laughs> um. There's also, I taught my son how to stitch pigskins. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be a crendor. That has to be. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I like, taught my son how to stitch pigskins. <laughs> is a crendor, one hundred percent. That's got to be me. Trained in the art of nut munching and finger clamping. That's definitely. Oh, that's you. easy. That's the woman who trained the squirrels to get her. Oh ex. yeah, the squirrel lady. That's right. I'll never forget that. That story had me laughing <laughs> hard. <laughs> I oh remember man, that. that story was great. Oh, here's a good one. That witch knows karate. I feel like that could be either of us in response to another person's joke. Yes, that's definitely one of us. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. In the end, it's <laughs> definitely one of us. It's definitely one of us. I'd go that far. Um, I don't know. I feel like I said it. I kind of remember saying it a little bit, but that may be my brain making it up. <laughs> I'm still trying to think of how the quote, nobody knows why those parrots got high. I don't know how we said that, and what I don't know what context that was said. Now I'm gonna have to go to the internet and look up high parrots. Oh my God, was this an article that we read at one point? Did we read an article about high parrots? Parrots keep attacking poppy farms to get high on opium. Is one oh of the articles? Oh my God, I think I remember that. Yes, these parrots just wanted to get high. I forgot all about that. Oh my God. It's all coming back to me. Oh, there's a good quote. Uh, I want to know who the idiot was that was the genius that came up with cookie butter. Well, I feel like that's me. Because that <laughs> sounds like gibberish. And yeah. when it comes to outrage gibberish, I'm the person to go to. <laughs> that's so, not wrong. Yeah. If you've, um, ever, if you've ever heard a quote and you're like, well, that doesn't make sense, but he definitely sounds passionate, that's me. <laughs> I'm the passionate idiot. That's that's definitely true. Uh, here's a good one. Every morning I get up and I say to myself, "Why are you so smart?" That's definitely something old me said. I yeah, it sounds just cocky enough, but also yeah. something modern me could have said. Modern me wouldn't say that. Right? No, you've been beaten <laughs> down. You've been beaten down by life too much. Yeah, I've been. Life has taken my my cockiness and my dignity. Now I'm a shell of a sloth. I wish I was pure and smooth. <laughs> <laughs> when did we have time to say all these weird things? Credo, <laughs> when? What is happening on this podcast? I don't know. I think we just I, like do the podcast, then we just black out. I like wish days. I was pure and smooth. <laughs> um... <laughs> I don't even know what that context would be. I don't either. That's, I wish uh, I was pure and smooth. What does that mean? Man, I wish I was pure and smooth. Man. But I'm not. I'm corrupted and bumpy. Yeah. <laughs> um, Who wants to go to the Eiffel Tower? You'll just have a bunch of people looking back up at you. That's you, and it will always be you. <laughs> and that is a really funny quote, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that. They still yeah. stand by that one. Yeah, I, yeah, that's that. You could have said that 
<laughs> 199 episodes ago, and it'd still be true today. Yeah. I that is 100% Why would you true. want to go up to the Eiffel Tower? Because it's amazing. Whatever. We're not going to have this argument again. <laughs> We're not going to do this. We're not going to relitigate this <laughs> on right, episode okay. 200. <laughs> That's fine. All right. It is fine. All right. Well, those are the quotes. Some of the ones that were sent to us. Thank you all for going back through or at least remembering weird stuff we said. Yeah. But now, listen to this other stuff we're going to say. 23 and Me is the right choice for a Father's Day gift. Let me tell you, it's right around the corner, y'all. 23 Me's Health and Ancestry Kit is the perfect gift for a limited time. You can get a Ancestry Kit and Health Kit through June 17th, 50 bucks off. If you need to buy a kit for yourself too, that's great because it'll give you 125 personalized genetic reports on health traits and more. And you can sort of match up with your dad and see like where he's at versus where you're at. It's cool. You can see all the different, the insights into how similar you are to your own father. Things like genetic weight or muscle composition or your sleep quality. Things like your fear of heights or motion sickness, right? All these reports are in there and can help you and your dad understand more about yourself. It's an awesome gift to show your dad that you really care. Wellness reports about your father's health can also be in there. Maybe to help him make informed decisions about what to do. It is the gift of exploration. Exploring your DNA, which is super fun and awesome to do. You can even opt in to connect with people who share your DNA so you can see all of your information together. Anyway... This Father's Day, get $50 off at 23andMe.com slash Cox. If you want a health and ancestry kit at 23andMe.com slash Cox, that offer again, $50 off, ends the 17th at 23andMe.com slash Cox. Getting fit and staying healthy always sounds easier said than done, right? That's what I used to say. Well, OpenFit is bringing you something new that makes it even easier to never miss a sweat session. Lose the commute to the gym and let the workouts come to you. But what's OpenFit, Crendor? Great question. OpenFit takes all the complexity out of losing weight and getting fit. It's a brand new, super simple streaming service that allows you to work out from the comfort of your living room in as little as 10 minutes a day. That's right. You could have worked out three times instead of listening to this podcast. So why do you want to try OpenFit? Well, everybody's bodies are different, and OpenFit gets it, which is why it's personalized to your needs with custom-tailored original content. There's amazing trainers and classes. OpenFit classes are led by some of the most effective, engaging trainers in the world. Sculpt your body with Andrea Rogers, founder of the worldwide sensation Extend Bar, or get in crazy good shape with Hunter McIntyre, named by Sports Illustrated as one of the top fit 50 fittest athletes that's a tongue twister these trainers know how to get your results quick it's super simple you see forget all the complexity and stress about getting fit and just press play workout on your own schedule 600 seconds with celebrity trainer devin wiggins packs the fat burning muscle building body sculpting benefits of much longer sessions into a fraction of that time Access anywhere at any time. View it on your computer, your web-enabled TV, your tablet, your smartphone, your Roku, any device with a screen that can stream stuff. You can probably view it. Results you can see. Lose up to 15 pounds the first 30 days. Flatten your abs. Shape your body. You're going to look great. You're going to feel great. And you're going to be great because you're a great person. Um, I did the, uh, the yoga. I always wake up every day now. I do yoga. They got a yoga thing. It's pretty neat. So... Uh, it helps me feel good for like starting the day instead of waking up and looking at my phone being like, oh boy, what's going on in the internet today? Nah, get rid of that. Just do too some real. namastes. Just, you've seen into my home. <laughs> <laughs> do some namastes, y'all. Uh, so, OpenFit has changed the way I work out. And with my new code, COX, C-O-X, you can join me on a fitness journey personalized just for you. Again, use code COX and start using OpenFit for your journey to a healthier life right now. During the OpenFit 30-Day Challenge, our listeners get a special extended 30-day free trial membership to OpenFit where you can lose up to 15 pounds in 30 days when you text COX, C-O-X, to 303030. You'll get full access to OpenFit, all the workouts, and nutrition information totally free. Again, 
Just text COX, C-O-X, to 303030. Standard message and data rates may apply. All right, Crandor, let's go to Chopped Cup 7. Scott's the Crandor. How's that traffic out there? Hey, traffic out there, man. <laughs> you talk about traffic? Let me tell you about traffic. There's traffic. It's the summertime. People are going all over. People are going crazy. You got trucks. You got cars. You got buses. You got planes. You got water skis. You got scooters. You got motorcycles. You got motor scooters. You got scooter mobiles. You got wheelies. You got uh, pop pop Americanos. You got dinosaurs. You got uh, tricycles, bicycles, uh, quadricycles, unicycles. You got everything out there. So watch where you're going, cause all there's so much, so much traffic. Back to you. Hey, <laughs> thanks, Crendor. Now let's go over to Crendor at the Weather Desk. How's that weather? Hey, welcome to the Weather Desk. Um, how's it going? Great. It's, you know, nice out. It, is, it sure is. Now, if you take a look at the weather right now, it depends. Because in Florida, there's a pool NATO, according to weather.com. So, uh, it's not so nice over there, I'll tell you that. Also, a lot of severe storms happening in the Midwest and the East Coast. Uh... Which is, uh, honestly, I like a good thunderstorm. It's pretty nice, relaxing. It was raining earlier. I was sleeping. Good stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and head on down to 44542. Junggu Ulsan, South Korea. What? Junggu Ulsan, <laughs> South Korea. I don't think that's how that's pronounced. That's wow. got to be it, dude. Okay. It's 68 degrees. Hey, it's like the same uh, same as it is right now here. It's pretty nice. It's like room temperature. Wow, Maybe we're all high. so much alike that we are different. Wow, that's wow. crazy. Wow. Um, and they got a UV index for a 10 today. It's 72. 20% uh, chance of rain. Tonight, 62 with a 20% chance of rain. Monday, 78. 10% chance of rain. Monday night, 62. 10% chance of rain. Tuesday, 83. 20% chance of rain. Eh, it's, it's pretty good. That's actually pretty nice weather. You're looking, uh, looking at all that. Sunrise, uh, 5.06 a.m. Sunset, 7.39 p.m. Uh, sun actually, well, I think over here it sets a little later. Rises a little earlier. That's just what happens over here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, UV index, 10 out of 10. Watch out for those ultraviolet rays, man. Those things are going to be blasting through your clouds. Uh, or just, you know, blasting those through your skin. Those are high performance. 10 out of 10. Ultraviolet rays. <laughs> Come on down and get my 10 out of 10 ultraviolet rays. These things are blowing off the index. This thing's blowing the scale out. You got to check out these ultraviolet rays. Get them now for $599.99. Your skin won't know what hit it. It probably will, though. because Yeah, no, you'll, you'll get burnt very ultra, badly. Yeah. Uh, that's this weather. Okay, let's talk sports. Sports. Welcome to the sports desk, everybody. Already some crazy stuff happening. Go Raptors. Uh, in sports. Raptors, NBA champions, taking down the Warriors who fell apart. Uh, go Raptors, first time they've ever won an NBA final or been in an NBA final. And uh, Canada wins the NBA final. Crazy stuff. But Canada finally wins something. I think the last time they won uh, like a thing was 27 years ago in terms of like the professional sports leagues. Did you see like that baseball. video of that guy who broke his TV? I did not, no. Just some dude, and he, I guess he lost money on the game, and he was like, I lost so much money! And he, like, threw the remote of the TV and broke it, and then he, like, threw the TV, and all of his friends were like, dude, stop! And he's like, ah, they took all my money! <laughs> it's incredible. Don't uh, bet on sporting <laughs> things if you can't afford it, y'all. Yeah, exactly. Don't bet on sporting things if you can't afford it. By the Actually, way, don't bet if you can't afford it. I think it's the best... <laughs> Is the best over here thing. Uh, in uh, Illinois? They've legalized weed and sports betting. What? So, it's all downhill in, from there. <laughs> starting in 2020, I can smoke a, a marijuana while betting on the the <laughs> NBA finals, and it's fine. I can smoke <laughs> a marijuana while betting on the NBA. You don't finals. want to do too many marijuana, so you could don't find do it. You get too, look too crazy. They have to be bad, man. Yeah. Um. Also, the Lakers have made a trade, trading uh, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, and three first-round picks for Anthony Davis of the New Orleans Pelicans 
uh, attempting to form a new super team with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Should be interesting. Uh, free agency might pick up another guy, try to make their own three team over there. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know what? Great. God bless. Good luck. <laughs> Whatever. Also, the St. Louis Blues won the Stanley Cup. Yo, yeah. Look at that. Uh, I saw JP was very happy about that. Uh, I think he just started watching hockey like a few For the first ago. time ever? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, wow, this is why people like sports. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hockey's really good. Who knew? Yeah. I mean, I knew. I like hockey. Yeah, we were uh, over here like, yo, my dude, <laughs> you going to want to go watch hockey? Yeah, I'd go to a hockey game. It's like, it's seriously the most fun sporting event to go to. Football is like you sit there and then they like take 40 years for ad breaks and then one team's at the other side of the field and you're like, well, I can't really see what's going on from here. And then uh, in basketball, it's, uh, it's kind of exciting, but it's kind of like, up yeah, basketball, up, uh, final five minutes, now everybody fouls each other. And then uh, baseball, it's like you're at a picnic, you're just kind of waiting around, hope you don't get hit with a random ball. And then hockey's just nonstop, like, oh, he takes the puck up the rise, oh, he's got to go, oh, he's going over here, oh, he got to go, go, oh. um, Also, great. let's be real. Uh, we have to admit that hockey is very close to soccer or football, except yeah. it's on ice, which makes it more dangerous. They have yeah. sticks, which makes it even cooler. Yeah. They're in pads because they beat the crap out of each other. And, <laughs> and yeah. it's very, very, very fast, which is great. Yes. It's super it's fun. Great. And the there are very like few sports. Hours. There are very few sports where they're like, pull out the goalie. <laughs> and that's when that shit happens, you know it's serious. Yeah, it's serious time. They're oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's great. It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I love hockey. Hockey's great. Um, so uh, St. Louis Blues uh, winning that. And now it's, it's hit the point where <laughs> it's just baseball. And uh, the NBA draft and NHL draft are next week. And uh, uh, what else? I mean. The Summer Olympics. Oh, yeah. Summer Olympics are going to be happening. That's. Uh, Eventually. Some point. Well, I think that's next year, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 2020. Nothing's <laughs> happening. <laughs> All right. Yep. <laughs> and then uh, uh, football starts up in a couple of months. Yeah, they got the hard knocks is the Oakland Raiders. That's going to be a good one. They got John Gruden and Antonio Brown. That should be interesting Oh, this should be to great. See. It'll be the last time they're called the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to see it. John Gruden's just a funny guy, too. He's just like, tell you what, man, I, I love that guy over there. He makes some great play. He's just a goofy guy. Uh, and that's sports. All right, Crendor, what is our big news story of the day? Uh, Florida man arrested for covering sleeping girlfriend in ketchup and said, that's what you get, bitch. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? A Florida man was arrested over the weekend after he allegedly covered his sleeping girlfriend in ketchup because he thought she was having an affair. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I don't know that the punishment equals the crime here. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. But I can't. But also at the same time, maybe it does. Was she having it's, an affair with a ketchup bottle? I honestly don't know. Was it and was it the fry <laughs> guy at a McDonald's? It's quite possible that would make. I'm a trying lot of to sense. think of like ways that this could be like a really good gotcha. <laughs> Peter Wegman, 37, is charged with domestic battery for pouring a large quantity of tomato sauce on his 41-year-old girlfriend after the couple had been in an argument over infidelity. Uh, Wagman and the victim, who has not been named, had been in a relationship for roughly 11 years prior to the incident. 4.45 a.m., the victim woke up to ketchup being poured on her by the defendant as the defendant was yelling, that's what you get, bitch, when the authorities arrived on the scene, the victim was covered in ketchup. Wag, <laughs> how much ketchup did he have? Yeah, I, is this like a Costco quantity of ketchup? Yeah, well, or he had one? a lot of ketchup. Also, I have to imagine if it was a small, you know, like a Heinz bottle, he must have been there for like 20 minutes trying to get the ketchup out of it, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's like hitting the back come of it. On. All right, <laughs> come on. What's the, I got to hit the, what do I have to hit, the 23 or whatever? What do I got to, yeah. Um, <laughs> investigators do not believe that mental health drugs or alcohol played a part in this case. Yeah, no, this uh, is just weird. It doesn't. It just, it, just you weird. don't have to be. 
You don't have to, he was just enraged and impassioned to dump ketchup on her. Apparently, Wagman and his girlfriend both previously been arrested for acting violently against each other. In April, Wagman's girlfriend was arrested again after she allegedly hit him during an argument at their house. Oh, see, that's uh, terrible. That's a problem. Yeah, that's the ketchup, problem. Why couldn't ketchup, she not like an mustard? issue. Oh, Just my like, God. <laughs> ketchup versus mustard in the house. Yeah. Solve your, solve your arguments in fun, creative ways. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Don't um, use your <laughs> fists when you can use ketchup. Um... I mean, really, that's just the story. Yeah, there's a lot missing. Like, why did he choose ketchup? I feel like because she slept with a dude who, like, I don't know, worked at a McDonald's or was a ketchup yeah. manufacturer or, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's got to be tied into it in some way. Or there's, there's no way. Or he was like, I got to pour something on her. <laughs> sure that I know. <laughs> it's just a weird reaction. It's a weird thing to do. Um, then there's, uh, one more story. Uh, man, 63, danced naked in McDonald's, then tried to have sex with railing. <laughs> Are, is uh, this, hold on. Are these yeah. two stories connected? This is this the guy that she cheated him. on him with? <laughs> it might be. Uh... <laughs> Uh, let's, let's see here. John Morgan reportedly burst into the restaurant in Naples, Florida on Sunday before stunning diners with an extreme display. Eyewitnesses say he appeared to be high on drugs and told their shocking, uh, or told their shock at seeing him attempting intercourse with a metal partition. They I don't his, even know how that works. <laughs> they described his behavior as strange. Yeah, no, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> Um, the suspect is said to have trespassed the same restaurant at least one other occasion. Uh, he remains in Coiler County Jail, appear in court July 3rd. He's been arrested 16 times since the start of 2018. While in prison, his prison psychologist, a young <laughs> woman, and he fell in love over ketchup. <laughs> That's it. That's the connection. Yeah, it's all connected now. It makes perfect sense. Well, at least we figured it out. Yeah, we figured out these stories. We are really, we're the jelly and the peanut butter that binds the bread of the news together. <laughs> it's true. I like it. Yep. Uh, I think you're you're probably the peanut butter. I'm probably the yeah. jelly. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd be peanut butter. Yeah, but are you crunchy peanut butter? I don't mind crunchy, but I think I'm smooth. I think you're I'm smooth? pure and smooth. Now, are you? Are, <laughs> is that where that quote came from? I don't know. Is that that pure and smooth quote? <laughs> oh if that my really god! Was, that would be kind of an ironic round of uh, circle back, you know, call back. Yep, that's the yep. word. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, that. that's it for us, everybody. Thank you so much for listening or watching or whatever you're doing. Uh, but before we go, Crendor, hit him with the social. Uh, we got socials. We got twitter.com slash uh, jessicox or J Co just jessicox, twitter.com slash crendor. Yeah, youtube.com slash jessicox, youtube.com slash crendor. Uh, and then we got so many other things. We have twitter. Uh, wait, I already did twitter. We got soundcloud.com slash cox and crendor. We got youtube.com slash cox and crendor podcast. We got youtube.com slash cox and crendor for animations. We got, uh, <laughs> We're on the iTunes. We're on, we're on all the stuff. Although iTunes is like breaking apart now, apparently. Uh, into like other... I don't know. I don't know how it works. Either way, just search Cox and Crendor. You'll probably find us or just our names. All right. Well, that's it. We will see you next time. And as always... Oh. To be continued.